Good evening, good morning, wherever you are. I welcome you to our next episode from Radio Evolve, our webcast for consciousness and culture. I'm happy to have with me from Sweden, Jan Adam Henriksen. Jan, welcome to Radio Evolve. Thank you, good to be here. Jan, um, just a little bit about your background. You are one of the co-founders of Left Leaders, Self Leaders, a Nordic leadership development firm and Relate, a values-based dating app. And you are a board member of Escaret Foundation in Sweden and head of the Thought Leader Gathering for Adult Development. Since 2010, you're part of the faculty of Stockholm School of Economics and a passionate co-creator, dancer, player of the class speed game inspired by Hermann Hesse. <laughs> the reason why I invited you, you have a very interesting project that you do together with the Escaret Foundation and other partners, which is called the Inner Development Goals, that if I understand it right, is inspired by the sustainable goals of the United Nations. And where your project is, we, yes, we need sustainability goals, of course, uh, in order to survive as a planet, we do need that. But we also need, for the same reason, inner development. And inner development uh, needs to be also understood in a very careful way. So as I see from your background uh, and from the research that you're doing, you try to develop categories and an understanding what human development is about and how it can help us to reach a sustainable future. Is that fair to start this way or is there something missing already? No, it's a, it's a good start. Uh, it's, it's both uh, pointing inwards and saying that we're many times missing that dimension, but also linking the inner dimensions more clearly and strongly to the sustainable development goals and also popularizing that, those concepts uh, in a way that is more accessible uh, to a broader range of people. I think many of your listeners are very well informed uh, and how do we make human development and also vertical development more uh, easy to understand and access and also link it to the, some of the greatest challenges that we're facing as humanity. So, of course, I think everyone who is listening and just everyone uh, uh, would agree a human development is important. But I think that's where the consensus already stops because oh, what is human development? How do we think about uh, human development? And then even more so, how can we measure human development? Uh, there are so many different understanding of what human development is about. Is there any way to find a, a kind of an informed consensus where we want to develop as humans? Yes, and this is the big question that we're still exploring, I guess. So, so if we take the story, how, how this started, uh, we were, Eckhart Foundation has an island in the archipelago uh, of Stockholm. I'm right now uh, at this island with beautiful view. I know it's a podcast, so you can't really see it, but I'm sitting and watching uh, the ocean and the trees. Uh, and what we have done for years is we have gathered thought leaders uh, mm -hmm. at the island to tackle some of the bigger challenges we are facing uh, as humanity. And we had Bob Keegan and Susan Kukreuter, uh, Jonathan Reams, and many other people who are authorities in the field of adult development. Uh, and last big gathering before COVID that we actually had physically, um, we managed to get some media attention to the need for human development and mm -hmm. uh, to show this link in, in many Swedish papers. But one of the most common questions that we got through, we wrote the Growth That Matters Manifesto, we had a beautiful conference at the Modern Art Museum on human development, but was, could you be more specific? This vertical development, this development that you're talking about, what specifically do we need to develop and how does exactly. that lead to those challenges? And here we said, okay, let's, let's see if we cannot just point to one of the theorists or models, but if we would come together and formulate a question uh, that was broad enough 
to gather people and we managed to get input from more than a thousand people, both practitioners and researchers, could we start seeing some kind of categories or skills that we could agree upon and that could be uh, helping us to collect uh, many of the practitioners and researchers in the field into in the same direction. So that was the project of the inner development goals. And the question that we asked that was the starting point of the inner development goals was actually what capabilities, qualities or skills do you believe are essential to develop individually and collectively in order to get us significantly closer to fulfilling the global goals? Mm -hmm. Uh, so it is spot on on the question you're working with uh, in your uh, uh, pod with culture and human development and how these meet, because we do need to work on this both individually and collectively if we are to succeed. Are there specific um, parts of science uh, that have... Uh, research that really can help us as a foundation how to think about human development. And I'm in particular talking about adult development. And I'm also talking about uh, higher adult development, because I think the underlying assumption, and I guess you would agree with, is in order to cope with the challenges that we are facing right now, and everybody agrees that we are in a, in a form of a cultural or civilizational crisis, that we need uh, also a development of human uh, inner consciousness, uh, our inner skills, but uh, that we have to go somewhere where uh, our usual way to how we perceive reality, how we deal with each other, uh, has have to be kind of, of we find have to find new skills how to do this. Is there science that can tell us? Uh, we have some results, we have some knowing, there is something, a direction that we can lean into. Yes, I'm sure there is. And I think there, there is also, I think there are two fields that are very important that are now uh, not collaborating enough. The first one is the science of adult development or human development, where we have theories that are many times, for most people, very abstract mm -hmm. and hard, uh, hard to get. Uh, and the second part is the sustainability studies that are getting more and more specific on how do we drive behavioral changes? How do we get people involved into the issues of sustainability? But these two fields have not been uh, intertwined enough. Uh, we, we, we need to collaborate more between the two researchers. And the same thing, like we have the people doing the research we have the people doing the interventions and then we have the HR managers or head of leadership development that are trying to navigate this very broad field on what type of development do we foster and try to do in our big organizations because we are we agreed also on the island that that, that is a very important arena. We think that this type of development can happen in organizations and big organizations can be quick to adapt these ideas and get them out uh, into the world. So that was our theory of change. So yes, to adult development, but not as the only field, but we do need also to get, get more inspiration from quite early on, we got Amy Edmondson involved with a concept of psychological safety that I think is very mm -hmm. basic and important here, but also people like Peter Senge and Otto Sharma um, and many others who have important insight uh, that can be integrated and brought into this. Mm. I mean, let me just ask the big, the big question, and I know it's kind of uh, uh, too big to answer, uh, at least in a short time. Uh, what do we need? What kind of new capacities or strengthening of old capacities or refining of old capacities, what do we need? Is there some kind of uh, consensus building up that there are certain skill sets, human skill set, that are tremendously important for us to, uh, to cope with the complexity of our world that we're in with the crisis that we're in? Is there something where you can see this and this and this and, and the combination of that 
is what we have to focus on if we want to kind of go into the future. I mean, again, we are just done with phase one or we're getting done with phase one of the inner development goals where we tried to map out the mm -hmm. categories and we, we found five big categories or buckets, you could say, of skills. And they're, of course, very interconnected and you could put them in different buckets. But this is how we, from the communication group, have decided to, uh, to label them. And it's the being, thinking, relating, collaborating and acting. You can find this all on the innerdevelopmentgoals.org. Uh, and here, just, just by talking about the five categories, what, what I can see is that if we talk about being as the relationship to self, where some of the parts or the skills are the inner compass, the presence, self-awareness, authenticity, and having an openness and learning mindset, Many of the people doing mindfulness and practicing contemplative arts are quite strong in this uh, in this field, and some mm -hmm. um, some are mostly focused in their work in this field. Others are very strong in the uh, thinking or cognitive skills, uh, which works more with at least as we identified the complexity awareness, the perspective skills, sense making, long term visioning. Uh, critical thinking and so on uh, just to give some examples here so and also here some people are very heavily invested in the thinking arena and developing more complex systemic thinking and understanding and sometimes are not working as much on the being or relating that is caring of others or, or the world so so I think we need a mix of many of these but I think it's also good that we start getting an overview and saying, this is of course not complete. It's just a dialogue. It's a start mm -hmm. of a conversation that is uh, very limited. It started in the Nordics. So it's mostly people in the Nordics, even though we have people from more than 40, 50 countries giving input. Uh, it's also still quite heavily in the business arena and the researchers, but it's a start to see if we are a larger group of people trying to make sense of this huge question that you are asking me, what do we need? Mm -hmm. uh, what type of answers do we get and how can we collectively make sense of this mm -hmm. and try to make it more and more? Also, one of the key aspects here was to make it accessible, mm -hmm. to make a person who inspires people who are not as into human development or have not spent years of their life working with that to understand a little bit what we might mean if we say that we need to work systemically with human development if we are to reach the global goals. Hmm. There's something that uh, really caught my attention uh, when I was looking at your project, and that is about the mythology, how you're going about this. And you already used some work like collective sense making. And uh, what really struck me that it seems uh, not so much that you kind of try to come up with your own scheme, how higher human development uh, or uh, human skills look like, but you seem to first bring together people who do some research. You seem to bring to people who do all sorts of practices in, this diff in these different areas. You make online surveys where basically everyone is asked to have input. So that in itself is also a particular way to deal with the complexity of the measure, that it seems that the focus point is to bring also as many perspectives into this conversation to hold also the complexity of what you try to achieve. That in itself is at least an unusual way for the way I see it. I don't see it very often that you so publicly try to do this as a shared process, as a process also that has different levels of people who are experts in that, or people who are interested in that, but to try to, to create a conversation. And as it seems, you try to uh, construct the, con the conversation in a way that uh, the outcome comes out of a collective movement. Is that fair to say? Yes, that, that's a very good description. Uh, Co-creation is a core value for all of us engaged in the Eckhart Foundation. And we had a very wise method leader, Thomas Yurdan, 
uh, who had a researcher named Maria Booth from Stockholm School of Economics helping him. So, I mean, it's not a scientific project. It's, it's a communicative project, but still we try to involve as many stakeholders as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and here I got a lot of inspiration from working with Peter Senge in the Society for uh, Organizational Learning with really to mix the knowers, doers, uh, and helpers, uh, the consultants, the scientists, and the practitioners out in the organization and get all of the, the, their input, but also to really work long and hard on that question that we, it took us several months just to formulate the main question of the survey, and then to gather, as you said, as many perspectives as possible, and then having two independent uh, researcher Thomas and Maria coding all the answers, trying to group them together, and then having a steering committee and a group of associated scientists uh, from uh, Stockholm School of Economics, also from uh, uh, Center for Social Sustainability at Karolinska Institute and Lund Sustainability Studies, uh, Lund University, uh, helping us to make sense of the data that we got. And then we iterated it several times. So we had pre-meetings and we had digital conferences. We did three conferences that were under the name MindShift, where we presented what we saw. And one of the categories communication-wise in the beginning was called agency. Uh, and people just said, it, it's too hard a word. There are many that didn't understand that who are not, again, in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, so after a while, we found these very simple acting collaborating, relating, so it's easy to remember. And most people can relate to that. And when they see the categories, they get a little bit more of a broader understanding, at least as some examples of what human development and flourishing mm -hmm. could mean. Uh, so there is the, a broadening of perspectives. Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, what we want to accomplish with the project also. Yeah. Two things I find very interesting what you're saying. One is... There's, it, it's per se not a research project, but a communication project. Uh, of course, based on scientific research, uh, I, I guess. Uh, but uh, connected to that, what you were just describing uh, about the uh, different ter terms like uh, agency and acting, uh, a communication process is about uh, the finding of mutual understanding. And that's a, a, a very interesting mindset because then it's not just a question, do I, have, do I have the precise termini that I need to understand the subject, but do I also have find the termini that we as a collective whole, and here it seems you're already thinking in the, in, in the broadness of society and culture as a whole, can communicate in. Because if I have the perfect terminology, but nobody understands what I'm talking about, maybe, I, maybe I'm succeeding as a scientist, but I'm definitely not succeeding as a communicator and definitely not succeeding as a change maker. So this is yeah. Yeah, very interesting good. because it changes that it changes what you need to do. Yeah, th thank you for, for, for bringing that up because that is very important. And uh, also we have some brilliant communicators with us. Uh, I mean, it is uh, Jacob Trollbeck, founder of the New Division. His company actually created the logotype for the sustainable development goals. I think we all recognize those 17 beautifully colored quadrants and the, the ring with the different colors. Uh, they made the design and they agreed to uh, contribute uh, with the communication and design for this project. So they're one of the co-founders together with Eckhart and the second one is the 29K, which is an, an app for personal development that is free and accessible for all. Uh, and from the start, we said, how can we, if this is to if human development would become as broadly popular, uh, if this model could become as broadly popular as the model for sustainable development, mm -hmm. uh, and people would connect to it, to the global goals, and even people, younger people or uh, people working in companies say, you know, I'm working also on myself, and through that, I'm trying to get better uh, at some skills, I'm trying to grow in, in some areas in order to be able to handle more complexity, to, to take more long-term decisions. Mm -hmm. How could we frame it in a way 
that would be really accessible for all. And Jacob had Jacob Trollbeck had some experience from the process of creating and popularizing the sustainable development goals. And here, some of the insights have been very important. And it's been quite hard, actually, many times to compromise between the group that is working with communication and then the scientists. Mm -hmm. And there has been some tension that we've also been very open about during the MindShift conferences mm -hmm. uh, on how to move forward without losing too much of the scientific integrity, but also making it accessible for all. Uh, and also in the report that we will be publishing now on the 14th of September, we will both publish the recommendation for the exact wordings and categories that Thomas Yordan and the scientists are mm -hmm. suggesting, and then saying, and we, the communication group, thought it was way too <laughs> complicated and hard to understand, so we have regrouped it some, we have called it in these categories, uh, and it's still the same skills, but uh, the naming, uh, especially of the categories, uh, we have tried to make as accessible as possible to, mm. to reach more people. Which, by the way, if I may add this as a kind of an observation, seems to me already a way to use part of what you uh, are pushing for, because complexity thinking yeah. uh, means also to be able to kind of be aware their scientific needs, but their communication needs, and you have to hold them together. And as a scientist, as a communicator, you have to find a mutual understanding how to hold all the aspects at the same time. This is part of what I say uh, of the kind of skills that needs to be brought together for all of us in, in, in order to work as a society. Uh, because we, we have to relate, we have to hold complexity. Uh, we, we have to you also have to have relationship to self, uh, a, a kind of presence. And to hold this all together is quite. Uh, a complex task of uh, personal development. There is one uh, a foundation that uh, or background why I really got in so interested in what you're doing. And this comes also uh, from a book that uh, one of your co collaborators, uh, Thomas Bergman, uh, 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 co-authored. And uh, Thomas Bergman, of course, is very much involved in, in, in your project. But he is he's a co-author of the book, The Nordic Secret. Yes. And The Nordic Secret, I find a very inspiring book in the sense in, in, in that it is a, a huge case study for a hypothesis that you just were basically putting into the conversation that inner development uh, is necessary for the development of culture and society. It is not just sustainability that we need and not just economic thinking, but we, as humans have to develop in order for society to develop. And what uh, the, this book, The Nordic Secret, uh, uh, in short kind of is about is that uh, uh, more than 100 years ago, the, uh, Scandinavia was one of the most uh, backward countries in, in Europe, basically agricultural. And something happened in the second half of the 19th century that uh, Scandinavia worldwide seems to be at the forefront, at least of postmodern developments in many in, in, in many ways. So what happened that transformed this part of Europe in this way? And the thesis is very interesting, uh, a, a, a word that uh, is a German word, the word Bildung, which is hard to translate into English, which is uh, for, the, for short, uh, the inner capacity to find an inner compass in a complex world that created a shift from traditional society to modern society in, uh, the Nordic countries, and that uh, I mean, there's a lot to say, but it, it made a huge change. And this, if this is true, and it seems to be true, it is a huge case that we have to invest as societies in in a development, not just because we are, we are interested in kind of humanities and, and, and we are good people, but because we want to develop society. So, in that sense, is it true? Because that's kind of my assumption that you are. Uh, project is also an attempt to pick up this experience of the Nordic development and find now means how we as societies are not just in Europe, but globally, can make the shift from modern postmodern in whatever we need to shift into. Is this a right assumption? Yes, it's a perfectly right assumption. And Thomas' thoughts have been very instrumental uh, for this. And uh, both that 
it has been done before in the Nordics and uh, that we have that work uh, and those wise politicians to thank for somewhat stable democracies that, that we have uh, today and uh, societies. But also uh, for a second reason that I think is very important to point out and it is that when we're going through big shifts or transformations in society and we are in one of those shifts now it's very easy that we face this ambiguity and uncertainty that we want to find a strong leader uh, mm -hmm. or, or when the global environmental crisis is pressing us that there is there will be forces that will say let the enlightened elite uh, guide us or rule us and there are of course huge risks in taking that road even if uh, there would be uh, some kind of group who are who is uh, more informed more knowledgeable competent there, there, there is an oppression that is always there that is very risky uh, for all of us uh, and this the inner development goals is really a project to try to keep and strengthen the democracy that we have for so many years fought and, and built together. Uh, because if we are to s continue flourishing as democracies, we do need again, we've done this before, and we need again to take a, a step and really collectively work uh, and systemically work on individual development. It's not the same thing as putting the responsibility on the individual and say, hey, we must all individually develop. It's uh, saying that we need structures and uh, systems that will help us all to grow uh, in these areas. And we know that this is possible because it has been done before. And it doesn't mean that it can be done in the same way uh, mm -hmm. through through all these folk uh, high, school, uh, high schools or uh, we have a lot of new technology. We can work digitally. We can find new and scientific ways of working with human development. But it has been done, and I think it can be done again. And this is also what Thomas is really, Thomas Bjorkman, really passionate about. So, how do you envision that right now? You you are in the transition of uh, phase one to phase two. Uh, maybe you, you start with describing what is this phase one and phase two, and and then. Uh, how do you envision the unfolding of this project? Where, where do you where, where do you think this can go, and how would that happen? Yeah. So the, the phase one was basically to start the dialogue of what kind of development do we need mm -hmm. and to have a language that is uh, common and simple uh, to illustrate what kind of development is needed for us to progress as humanity. And we don't think that we will ever be able to close phase one, but we, we have uh, said that the 14th of September, uh, and now we're starting to publish some of the early results and to continue that dialogue, to continue expanding uh, the group of people who are involved to become more and more global. And here also our partners from Hofstede Insight are helping us with a report to become more conscious of the cultural biases that we all have in different countries and regions of the world and to reflect on the inner development goals from the uh, cultural lens of uh, different uh, perspectives so that, that that is coming also and then we enter into the phase two where we want to figure out okay so how do we develop and this question can be tackled from many different uh, angles. We could ask uh, researchers uh, or experts saying, okay, when you develop people, if you do that either in a, a program in a company or if you're a scientist and you uh, work scientifically on some methods, what are the methods that you're working on? What's your theories of change? How do you actually go about developing people? But we could also ask the actual subjects or ourselves and saying, hey, when have you developed? <laughs> And how did that happen? Did you go did, through some process? Was it anything particular that was helpful for you? And so on. So we, again, we want to involve as many people as we can from different perspectives. And right now we're starting doing the first interviews with these questions just to find out how do we build this kind of survey. Uh, and we will have 
Thomas Jordan is still involved, but also Christian Stolne, which is a very close uh, colleague and uh, popular researcher in the field of adult development also in, in Sweden that are, is taking on uh, phase two. And then we hope by November, December to have the first draft of the survey that we hope some of the listeners here who also have a lot of skills and tools and methods and understanding of human development could contribute with their perspectives. How can we work with development? And so basically, home, you're looking right now in phase two for methods of development in the different in 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 the different fields and to, to create to create kind of a a, a field of uh, uh, integrated development skills that can be somehow brought together in the differences and uh, uh, in whatever kind of uh, nuances they have so that there is a broad field of how we can work human development. Is that right? Exactly. And I love that you were, used the word the field because we're, we're playing with the word field book, that we're trying to create uh -huh. a field book for, for human development. Um, and we here again, we will need help of uh, many wise uh, individuals uh, to contribute to that. What do you need? Well, just if, if some of the listeners are, say, hey, I, I have something. Uh, what do you need and how can you contribute? Yes, so please just uh, at the innerdevelopmentgoals.org, you can register to the newsletter uh, and we always send out uh, and we will put the updated survey there. So you can already now take a survey just to get, get help us understand uh, how people value the different skills from different regions in the world. So just fill in your country, uh, your age, and which skills you think are most essential. So that is the survey that is out now, but we will update in, um, I think, November to a new survey that will be more focused on how to make uh, development happen and the methods and theories of change there. Uh, and then in May, 2022 we hope to have a first draft of this field book that is uh, open source co-created mm -hmm. uh, and again like a living handbook for inner development goals that we hope can be used by many and what what makes me hopeful here is actually two things first of all that we got so much interest from the big organizations. And here we need to involve even more big organizations to get on board into this project, like IKEA and Ericsson and Spotify, who are okay. saying, you know, we, we are onto this and we want to work with all our people and we will apply this in our organizations. Wow. Uh, so that makes me very hopeful. But, but the second thing is more philosophical, I think, that is also giving this project a lot of power and thrust. And, it's a kind of integration of left and right uh, in, in politics, uh, in ideology. Because if you think about it, like the left wing has always been about societal change, right? Uh, and if you go too far towards that, you kind of lose yourself and you only focus on the systems and you say, we need to change the systems and then everything will be all right. And the right, has always been a little bit more about caring of your inner circle, you know, cleaning your own uh, house, your own bed, uh, about maybe a bit more even on character development and mm -hmm. not so much on caring about or looking on the societal structures. And what we're trying to do with the inner development goals is saying we need both and we need to integrate them in a healthy way. It is about individual and, and human development, about building character development that takes years. It's not a quick fix, but it's also about building healthy systems, uh, educational systems, organizational systems, societal systems that will help us both continue growing and enhance that character development, but also collaborate uh, create the psychological safety we need in order to take more sustainable uh, decisions. Mm. I mean, that big companies like uh, IKEA, Ericsson, Spotify, all Nordic companies, obviously, are, are interested to pick this up. On one hand, it's of course very exciting. Of course, uh, particularly for the left wing, you will uh, get in immediately the suspicion that this is just instrumentalized to kind of, uh, rationalize the human capital that they're, that they're working with. Uh, 
when you do this and when you work together and when you kind of bring also left values like societal change and uh, right values, uh, if I kind of go with your thought like character change, uh, bring them together when you kind of uh, bring skill sets that, uh, that are helpful to developers. And uh, when you have public recognition of uh, companies, of the politics, what would be a next step? How do you implement these insights? What, what do you do with this? I mean, it's it's a big question. I think for us always, it has been, first of all, to be a platform for dialogue, to invite uh -huh. all those actors in and to talk and, and to reflect and to acknowledge that this is needed and what can we do about this. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, I can also many times be aware of the shadows of this project uh, and the dangers of what happens if we focus only on this internal uh, building of skills and, and the inner development. Will we slow down on the actual changes that we need to make? Will we not uh, see them as urgent, but wait for a new generation, for people to change, for new skills to emerge. Mm -hmm. um, the, there, there are many, are we doing this just because it makes us who are into human development to feel important and feel less guilty of not working with actual uh, challenges uh, and very acute crises that we're facing uh, in the environment and so on. And here, Eric Fernholm from the 29K, the CEO and one, one of the initiators, I think he has always had a very fine and optimistic tune and saying, yes, this, I mean, in this time of transition, we need to make this uh, uh, unholy alliances, you know, between the academia, between the commu communicators, between the, uh, the companies, who, and it's it's not you can't really say that IKEA is on to this or Spotify or Ericsson they are but there are a few really really engaged individuals very high up vice presidents head of HR head of sustainability who is truly trying to make a difference and saying I will try to push this and work with this internally and then they realize you know this is actually quite well received. And of course, it will be from many different motivations. It's not always just the, uh, the good intentions. But uh, what I hope and what I see happening is that I've been, I, 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 my uh, earlier work was with self-leaders and working with values. And we put more than 70,000 people through different educational programs. And what I have seen is that sometimes when there is a company and there comes a new CEO or new owner, even a big company, and all the values can just go out the window because a CEO says, you know, I don't really believe in empathy. I believe in speed. I believe in excellence and I believe in uh, uh, quality. Uh, and this, I think, is a huge risk that cannot happen. And if we integrate, just like we have done the sustainable development goals, it's something that everybody needs to relate to. If we would have a compass or a quality skill set, that we are saying this is something that is important for all human beings if we are to reach uh, the sustainable development goals. And it's something that we need to relate to. How do we, and if we look at these relating skills like connectedness of being part of a larger whole, empathy, compassion, appreciation, humility, and it's, it's a cluster of skills that you can hopefully not as easily ignore. It will always be there HR or other people will always be able to refer to that and say, wait, these are actually important capabilities. And we know that they take many years to develop. So even we need to collaborate between big organizations and companies. And as I said, it has a strong bias since it started in the Nordics. And this is also why we need help going out internationally, getting more organizations, universities, practitioners from all over the world to help us reflect, to engage, but also involve people who can actually uh, apply this and take these ideas out because it's, it's fully owned by the foundation of Eckhart. Uh, it's a small organism that is now called Growth That Matters, where the inner development goals and all the intellectual properties is. 
we hope it will be a foundation of itself. So there is no commercial interest and we're trying to do this uh, free for all to use and uh, open source. So everybody who are involved can see how this emerges and grows. I mean, you mentioned uh, in, in many ways, uh, these two sides, society, consciousness, inner development, sustainability development, and also the, the danger that if we focus too much on the inner, do we kind of lose the urgency on, on, on the outer? I see the opposite, uh, uh, seeing you from the outside, that uh, it seems uh, the first time, at least to this degree, uh, there always have been uh, huge communities of inner development. Uh, uh, kind of spiritual development, psychotherapy, psychological development. Uh, there always have been political developments, but there is a lack of attempts to think this together. And the way you describe it, and by the way, also the way you use language, because when, when you talk about uh, being in relationship to self, very easily you can go in this in a spiritual language. And I think many people uh, also would do that. And uh, to some degree, I think it's also appropriate. But in order to hold this in, in, in also in an, in an open context, where people with different secular and non-secular background can hold this together, you're looking seemingly for a language that holds all of them. That in itself, uh, beside the project, uh, seems to be a project on its own to hold this dialogical context where this inner development skills can be developed by people holding different worldviews yeah. and still be able to not kind of uh, uh, go after each other, but to cooperate and collaborate. Exactly. And here I just uh, need to again mention the huge work that Thomas Jordan has done on language because we have had so many rounds and so many different people giving input and he has been really trying to balance and see what is true from the surveys, from the input and what makes sense scientifically and try to, to find that delicate balance, which is of course sometimes a compromise or many times a compromise, but also tries to include uh, several stakeholders in each of the formulation mm -hmm. uh, so that more people could, could relate to that and find, yes, this makes sense. It's maybe not exactly as I would put it, but I can still go along with this. Yeah. I mean, also as we are coming to the end uh, of, uh, of our time here, uh, you, you, you already named some entry points, but when people really find this an, an initiative that really can make a difference, a difference for our cultural development, but in the end also a difference for, for our uh, sustainability as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a globe here. Uh, how can people contribute? How can people come in? Our, you mentioned the website, you mentioned the survey, are the next steps where, uh, where you are looking for input or where, where you're looking for collaboration? I mean, the, some of the strongest, biggest differences that uh, it has made is, I mean, uh, many of the people working in consulting or with tools and methods, many times they have one or two clients where there is a CEO or a founder of a company who has realized that human development matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually these people together, the, the agent together with the founder or practitioner can make a huge difference by also saying, look, let's, let's apply some of these ideas and, and let's do this together. What, what we have seen is when, when people bring others who are already there or very close to being there and these founders come to the conferences or to the, where, where, by the way, I should also mention that all our thought leaders have been working pro bono. Nobody has been paid for their contri contribution <laughs> to the conferences. It, it's a huge and beautiful co-creation. And when the founders meet each other or the CEOs or the a HR directors, and they understand, oh my God, you're also doing this and you're serious about it. You're not just doing this for the image. You're truly trying to work with these issues on how to create more courage or perseverance or optimism in, in, in the teams, uh, we start encouraging each other and then change starts to, to happen. And this is what we have identified very early on that the organizations 
uh, and not the, unfortunately the schools or the political systems. They're very important and we need to get them on board also. But we think that the forerunners will be the organizations and they can show the way. And that this is an invitation to uh, bring with you those people who have power in, in their systems, in organizations, and can quite quickly adopt uh, and implement and try out new ideas. Jan, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure.